today we're going to be talking about how to find the distance between polar coordinate points. And in this particular problem, we've been given the coordinate points 2 pi over 3 and 4 2 pi over 3. And it's important to remember that when we're dealing with coordinate points, we're talking about the points in the form r comma theta as opposed to Cartesian coordinate points, which are in the form x, y. These are in terms of r theta. Now in order to calculate the distance between these two points, we're going to need a distance formula in terms of polar coordinates. The distance formula we have here is in terms of Cartesian coordinates, and it's pretty quick to derive the formula in terms of polar coordinates from the one in terms of Cartesian coordinates, so I wanted to show you guys how we did it. But if you prefer, once we get to the distance formula in polar coordinate points, you can memorize that one and use it directly instead of deriving it from the distance formula in Cartesian coordinates. So if you'll remember, the way that we convert between polar and Cartesian coordinates, we say that x is equal to r cosine theta, and we say that y is equal to r sine theta, and we make those substitutions for x and y. So if we want the distance formula in terms of polar coordinates, we can substitute for x sub 2, r sub 2 cosine of theta sub 2. And if we want to substitute for x sub 1 to get that in terms of polar coordinates, then we'll substitute r sub 1 cosine of theta sub 1, and we'll square that. We'll make the same substitutions for y, and we'll get r sub 2 sine of theta sub 2 minus r sub 1 sine of theta sub 1, and we'll square that. Now it's just a matter of simplifying this formula using a couple of the trigonometric identities we have here to get to the formula for distance in terms of polar coordinates. So we'll distribute these squared exponents here. We'll multiply these out. Basically, it's just about foiling these out. If you want to write out these two terms side by side so that it's easier for you to foil it, then that's fine. We'll just go ahead and do it directly here. But when we multiply r sub 2 cosine of theta sub 2 by r sub 2 cosine of theta sub 2, we'll get r sub 2 squared cosine squared of theta sub 2. Same thing here. We'll continue to foil this out, and what we'll end up with is minus 2 r sub 1 r sub 2 cosine of theta sub 1 times cosine of theta sub 2, and then when we multiply negative r sub 1 cosine of theta sub 1 by itself, we'll get plus r sub 1 squared cosine squared of theta sub 1. That takes care of foiling the first part here. Now we want to foil out the second part here, and we'll get r sub 2 squared sine squared of theta sub 2 minus 2 r sub 1 r sub 2 sine of theta sub 1 sine of theta sub 2 plus r sub 1 squared sine squared of theta sub 1. Now we're going to collect like terms and what we notice here is that we have this term and this term which are both preceded by an r sub 2 squared. So what we'll get is r sub 2 squared times when we factor out the r sub 2 squared, we multiply this then by sine squared of theta sub 2 plus cosine squared of theta sub 2. We'll do the same thing for the terms that are preceded by r sub 1 squared. We have this r sub 1 squared cosine squared theta and r sub 1 squared sine squared theta. So when we add those together and factor out the r sub 1 squared, we get r sub 1 squared times sine squared of theta sub 1 plus cosine squared of theta sub 1. And that just leaves us with these two terms here, which are each preceded by a negative 2 r sub 1 r sub 2. So what we do is we bring those together and we factor out the negative 2 r sub 1 r sub 2, and that ends up being multiplied by cosine of theta sub 1 cosine theta sub 2 minus sine of theta sub 1 sine of theta sub 2. Now we're going to come back up to our trigonometric identities that we identified in the beginning here. We know that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. So this whole thing here is going to be equal to 1 and cancel. 
this whole thing will be equal to 1 and cancel. So notice that we're just left with r sub 1 squared and r sub 2 squared. So we have r sub 1 squared plus r sub 2 squared. And then over here, we'll be left with the minus 2 r sub 1 r sub 2. But what we have in the parentheses here can be simplified using this trigonometric identity here. Cosine of alpha times cosine of beta plus sine of alpha times sine of beta is the same as cosine of the quantity alpha minus beta. So in our case, that means that we're going to simplify what's inside the parentheses there to cosine of theta sub 1 minus theta sub 2. And this is going to be our final distance formula in polar coordinates. So you can derive this formula from the distance formula in Cartesian coordinates, or you can choose to memorize this one, whatever's easier for you. But this is the distance formula we're going to be working with for our polar coordinates. So now if we go back up to our polar coordinates and we call this r sub 1 and theta sub 1, and r sub 2 and theta sub 2, then we can just plug these in directly. So our distance is going to be the square root of r sub 1 squared. So r sub 1 is 2. When we square it, we get 4 plus r sub 2 squared. r sub 2 is 4. When we square it, we get 16. So we get 16 there minus 2 times r sub 1, which we know is 2, times r sub 2, which we know is 4, times cosine of theta sub 1, which is pi over 3, minus theta sub 2, which is 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3. And now we're just going to evaluate this. So when we simplify, we'll get the square root of 20 when we add the 4 and the 16. 2 times 2 times 4 is 16, so we get minus 16 cosine. Pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3 is negative pi over 3, and we just need to evaluate that on our unit circle. So if we take a look at our unit circle here, the angle negative pi over 3 means starting here at the angle 0, and instead of how we normally would, moving counterclockwise this way along the unit circle, because we have the angle negative pi over 3, we're going to move clockwise in this direction along the unit circle, an angle of 1 3rd pi. And that's going to take us to right here at 5 pi over 3. So 5 pi over 3 is the same as the angle negative pi over 3. And since we have basically 1 3rd pi or 1 pi over 3, you just want to go this direction until you find the first angle that's over 3. So this one is 11 pi over 6, 7 pi over 4, and until we find the first 3 here, that's how we know we've gone 1 pi over 3. So we get to 5 pi over 3, and because we're talking about cosine, we want to take the x coordinate at this point, which is 1 half. So cosine of negative pi over 3 is 1 half, and we can substitute that in. So what we'll get is distance equals square root of 20 minus 16 times 1 half. When we simplify this, we get that the distance is equal to the square root of 20 minus 8, which is the same thing as the square root of 12. We can pull out a 4 here and say that this is the square root of 4 times 3, and because we have the square root of 4 in here, we can take the square root of that individually and pull out a 2. So what we get for our final answer is that distance is equal to 2 times the square root of 3. That's the distance between these two polar points, which we found using the distance formula for polar coordinates. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.